Good afternoon, subscribers, followers, listeners, podcast, YouTube, Sales Academy, friends and family. Uh, last week, I had the pleasure of interviewing the awesome Bob Berg. Bob Berg from the brilliant book series, uh, The Go-Giver. Uh, so Bob Berg is a co-author with John David Mann. And I had the pleasure of reading this book a number of years ago, and it, and it was a game changer for me. I read that book and I was like, and I've kind of read it in three hours. And it reminded me of some really, really powerful principles that I, can't, I live my life by, but I didn't necessarily realize they were a thing. You know, it was just kind of how I breathe, just like breathing, right? You don't kind of notice it as such, you just do these things. And then you realize that actually they're a thing and they hold massive gold and massive weight and massive value. So today I want to talk to you about a, a topic and a conversation that came up in that interview with Bob Berg that I did over on Clubhouse last, Clubhouse last week. And it was a phrase that he said in the book that comes out, which was, listen to the back of your neck. And I remember when I read that phrase in The Go-Giver Influencer, that what, what, does it, what does that actually mean? Listen to the back of your neck. And I was, it, it, Bob was explaining it last week. It's like, look, when you, when you listen to the back of your neck, you go all in, right? You don't just listen at a surface level. You don't just listen to respond. You don't just listen even to hear, right? You listen with your heart. You listen all the way. And it got me thinking, how much do we do that? Now, I'm a big fan of listening. Yes, I'm an orator. Yes, I, I love to share knowledge and information and I'm a public speaker and on all this sort of stuff. I love, yeah, in, in abundance, right? But deep down, I love listening more. And the old adage of two ears and one mouth and we should use them in that format and stuff. Yeah, 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 I get all that. But one of the things that I guess from a personal values point of view that strikes me really hard, and when I say strikes me really hard, I mean it hurts is when I feel I'm not heard, when I feel I'm, I'm not being listened to, when I feel my opinion doesn't matter, when I feel that the person in front of me doesn't care. And Zig Ziglar famously said, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And oh man, was he right, you know? So in terms of listening, it's one of the skills that I teach people in, in coaches training. I'm, I've got six coaches that are coming through training this year with me. And these are coaches that are going to go on to be coaches in their own field and stuff. It's not just sales academy coaches. Uh, but there's certificates for this and kind of accreditations for that. And there's, you know, there's like, if even if you pick up the book, the, 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 the big book of little coaching models or the little book of big coaching models, whatever it is, I can't remember the title now. Um, there's 76 different coaching models in that book. And I'm like, man, you don't need all of them. They're basically somebody who's like the grow model and somebody's, come up with the regrow model because the grow model is good but they've added two more words to make it their own and then they can publish that and then they can license it and then they can sell it and then they can make lots of money and then you've got a certificate so now you're a qualified coach oh wow but if you don't have the skills of a good human being if you don't know how to listen to the back of your neck if you don't how know how to go in and listen with your heart all in to care enough to hear the things that are not being said as well as hearing the things that are being said, to listen to the words and the words that they're choosing to use and, and beginning to understand the psychology of those words and therefore listening and, and challenging back because listening is also asking questions. Listening isn't always just sitting still and silent. Listening is your facial expressions, your body language, are you in, are you back? You know, listening is all of this combined. And listening is also asking questions to challenge the pattern interrupt, to challenge the thinking, to enable somebody to possibly choose a different path or go down a different path because you've heard what's been said, but even as they've said the words, they haven't heard the impact that those words are having. Let me give you a very classic example. When people say things like, oh, don't forget next Tuesday, what you've actually done is told my brain to forget next Tuesday because the brain here it doesn't hear the double negative. It doesn't hear the don't. So it looks for emotions. It looks for on, on your timeline, right? On your memory timeline, it looks for events that have emotions attached to them. And it has references then about how you feel about that event, your emotional responses to that positive or negative. It just brings them back to you. So 
when you hear somebody say don't forget the brain doesn't hear the don't it counts as out. it's looking for an emotion forget oh you remember how you felt when you forgot that and your brain goes yeah 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 it goes right he's just asked you to do that again so if we change the words don't forget to please remember our brain will go you remember that time when you remembered how that person felt when you remembered their birthday how that person felt when you remembered their anniversary and then you get the warm feelings and they get the warm feelings and all the chemicals are released and your brain goes oh yeah yeah do that then remember that instead of forget that so when you're listening with your heart you're listening to everything that's being said and everything that's not being said and you're questioning and challenging you're questioning to siphon out the things that aren't being said reading between the lines trying to understand you're questioning the person to understand for you yes but deep down you are questioning to understand to help the person that's saying what they're saying to truly understand what it is they mean when they say it to truly understand the impact that those words that are just falling from their mouth when anyone will listen but not you, because you're going to challenge, you're going to listen, you're going to care, you're going to repeat their words back to them, not your interpretation of their words. It's a skill called active listening. And it's a skill that I recommend every single one of us develop, fine tune, put ourselves into experiences, practice it, play it back. All right. Because are you truly listening is the subject title of this podcast. That's where I'm going to title it and that's where I'm going to share it with you. But it came from that really, really insightful little nugget from the book of listen to the back of your neck. So I challenge you in your conversations this week, this month, this quarter, as the world starts to wake up in 2021, as we start to move closer to these five week goals leading towards uh, a, a, a loosening of the restrictions that we've had and the world of business and life starts to wake up. I challenge you to truly listen. Listen to the words that are being said. Listen to the words that are not being said. Listen to the tonality of them. Listen to their reactions and the words that come out of their mouth, their body movements as well. Listen to everything. Listen with your entire body and listen to their entire body, words, tone, pace, sincerity, humility, all of it. Go all in. Listen with your heart. I know you've got a big heart. So listen with your heart and care enough because the person sat opposite you, when you show them, not just tell them, when you show them how much you care, when you give them the time, that gift of time is huge. Every single second you give, every single second you have is irreplaceable. When it's gone, it's gone, right? If it was a hundred pound and you needed to make a hundred pound, you would find a way because you're resourceful. So money is a kind of... It just flows, right? But time, as soon as you've spent it, you can't get it back. So it's the most precious investment you have. So if you're prepared to gift that time to somebody, then gift it with everything you've got. There's one of the simple measures of stratospheric success, one of the simple strategies of stratospheric success, and it's a go-giver principle. So I look forward to seeing and hearing and feeling how you've Notice the difference in the conversations and the connections and the rapport and the relationships that you're having and building when you listen to the back of your neck. Have a brilliant week, people. Let me know your thoughts. Look forward to speaking to you soon. Adam Brooks, Sales Academy.